In this tutorial we'll show you the simplest way to create a tower like this one that has two different facade components. External facade with rectangular and inner one with triangular models. We will play with the box form by subtracting it with the void shape which will be created based on the input curves. These input curves would in fact dictate the final shape and look of our project. So let's do some magic in Grasshopper. First, we will define point and use it as origin of XY plane that will be used as a base plane of a square grid. It requires three more inputs, grid size and the number of cells along X and Y direction. In the next step, we need to multiply the grid along Z direction, so simply we can add a series of numbers into vector Z and don't forget to graph the output in order to multiply each square. Spacing between the numbers will be the same as grid size. After that, we'll create a box as based on each cell, box height is the same as grid size. Now I'm going to import predefined curves and use them as attractors. So we'll keep the boxes based on their distance to the nearest curve. In order to get the distances, we'll extract the box centers and pull to the attractors. If the distance from the box center to the nearest curve is smaller than 16.8, those boxes will be kept. The rest I'm going to turn off. In the next step, we need to remove overlapping box faces and keep the shell only. We can identify those faces based on overlapping points. So we need to take the faces, flatten the list and extract their centers. Using cal duplicates, we can identify overlapping points. It is important to set cal all. Based on index numbers of leftover points, we can extract the faces that are not overlapping. The list of faces will be separated in two lists. In one will be faces that are placed on the bounding box and in the other will be the rest. So I'm going to extract face centers and test whether the point is placed inside BRAP. Don't forget to set true value in the strict input. Based on true and false pattern, we can create two lists. In the list A are the faces with the center placed inside bounding box and in the list B are the faces on the bounding box. Alright, now I'm going to take the faces from B output, join them and convert into mesh and create only frames from it using component picture frame from Verber plugin. The other set of faces will be converted into mesh using the same method and its vertices are going to be welded with join mesh and weld component also from Verber plugin. In the next step will be applied Laplacian smoothing. Don't forget to set zero into S input, keeping the naked edges fixed. In the next step, we need to triangulate the mesh with 3D mesh component. Target edge length will be set to two, 50 number of iterations and false value in the sharp input as we don't want to preserve sharp features. Please keep in mind, if some of the boxes share the same edge or if the boxes share the same vertex, you will get connection error and you won't be able to generate triangulated mesh with 3 d mesh component. In that case, you can still create triangulated mesh using another method with Catmull Clark subdivision. Let's set the color to distinguish these two meshes. If you want to go further with the subdivision, you can apply weird birds split triangles. Number of subdividing iterations will be set to one. As the mesh I created doesn't have any connection error, I will use 3 Remesh and apply once again Weaverbird's picture frame component. In order to create floors, we need to join inner triangulated mesh and frames from outer mesh. Once we get the single mesh, we're going to create horizontal contours. Contour start point will be extracted from evaluate box component. In the W input, set number slightly larger than zero to avoid headache. Z vector will be contour normal direction and the distance between contours will depend on the grid size. So I took the number from the slider that defines grid size and divide by three, which means each grid cell on the facade will be divided in three pieces. Generated point lines will be joined into closed ones. Before we create surfaces, I suggest to collapse short segments in a polylines using tolerance 0.2, which means all segments smaller than this value will be collapsed. And if I zoom in here, it's visible that this short segment doesn't exist anymore. Finally, point lines that we get will be used to create floor surfaces. Let me switch to render mode and see how the final result looks. Also, 
we can switch from triangulated mesh to Catmull Clark subdivision mesh and compare these two results. In the extended version of this tutorial, we are going to continue building up our project. We are specifically going to focus on bringing more realism to the building by transforming floor surfaces to 3D geometry that is not intersecting with the facade. Also, we are going to increase the thickness of inner and external facade panels and making sure that we get a clean model at the end. Second part of the tutorial will be focused on rendering an animation with V-Ray. First, we will set V-Ray clipping plane and apply V-Ray materials. Then, you will learn how to animate the clipping plane and how to create animation from section cuts. You can watch this on our Patreon page and support our work at the same time. With that, you will also get access to all our extended tutorials and project files. If you'd like to know exactly how to create complex projects like these, and if you're interested in step-by-step -step learning approach starting from zero, make sure to check our Grasshopper Complete course, where you'll find over 60 hours of video material structured in a form of video library, covering in-depth more than 500 Grasshopper components through practical examples. And you'll have access to us personally, so we can answer all of your questions right away. The link is in the description.